or welcome to Lecture 11, Auditing Everything We Do. And again, just to remind you, uh, this is a synopsis lecture and uh, for reference and study purposes, you should use the full lecture. This week we're at, uh, at uh, 11, week 11, Auditing Everything We Do. And this is what we will cover during the lecture. So first, a Dilbert joke. I'll make your life miserable. I'll thwart your every move. Hi, I'm the new saddest. Ah, oh, what happened to the old one? Ah, oh, he went to saddest paradise. Ah, oh, the auditing department. So that's a view a lot of us have of auditors. But in the airline industry, auditing is a most important function. Whether it's from a financial auditing, whether it's from a compliance auditing, or from an operational audit perspective, we need the assurance that what we're doing uh, is safe, what we're doing is uh, financially uh, advantageous to us, and so on and so forth. So auditing these days is a, is, a, uh, is a discipline that we all need to accept is a part of our industry and will continue to be a part of our industry. And rather than thinking of it as the saddest or the, the bad people, what we need to do is to understand that there's a legitimate reason for auditing, auditing to occur and to facilitate it. Corporate responsibilities in Australia are managed by the Australian Securities and Investment Commission. And what I want to do is just talk to you about the fact that if you are not just a manager, but you are an office holder in your organisation, there are legal uh, requirements in every country that you need to fulfil. And as a director of a company, in Australia under the Corporations Act 2001, you need to be honest and careful in your dealings at all times. You need to know what your company is doing. You need to take extra care if your company is operating in business because you may be handling other people's money. Make sure that your company can pay its debts on time and see that your company keeps proper financial records and act in the company's best interest even if it may not be in your own interest, even though you may have set up the company just for personal or taxation reasons, and use every or use any information you get through your position properly and in the best interest of the company. So using that information again directly or indirectly or and so on and so forth may expose you uh, to uh, other claims and uh, in fact it may be an offence or a crime. And this information need not be confidential. If you use it in the wrong way and dishonestly, it may still be a crime. So again, under ASIC, you need to, there's, there's personal uh, diligence and probity that are required on your part uh, to be a director of a company. Uh, ASIC asks you to keep uh, some basic financial records. They call them basic, but the list is quite extensive. I don't intend going through it in any detail, but you need a general ledger. You need some cash records. You need data and sales records. You need wage and superannuation records, a register of property, plant and equipment, inventory records, investment records, tax returns and calculations, deeds, contracts and agreements, just to name those highlighted in the legislation. A company would also normally prepare the following statements. So these are things that a company would need to submit uh, or to, uh, or to uh, prepare on a monthly basis uh, to manage its business performance. A uh, statement of financial performance, a statement of financial position, a statement of cash flows. So uh, they're quite, uh, quite extensive, the things that you need to provide. The lists are only given as examples as the financial records required will depend on individual circumstances. And large organisations need professional advice. When an organisation gets large, the complexities of, uh, of uh, some of these aspects are so great that you need professional advice either internally or externally. In all commercial and government activities in regulated economies such as Australia, there's regulatory and business reasons why internal departments and external entities or authorities may wish to conduct an audit. So what is audit? An audit is an evaluation of a person, organisation, system, process, enterprise, project or product. Again, there's some common meanings for it, but the, uh, the reality is that the, uh, the term audit is used, being used on a much broader basis uh, in everyday life. 
and decision makers seek assurance regarding the reliability of the information so that they use, use it to make decisions. Auditors are valued as they are independent and unbiased evaluators of information. And in some cases you need to have some specific accreditation uh, to conduct the role of an audit, like a financial audit. And there's a variety of other trained professionals in the case of compliance and operational audits. Audit standards uh, come from many sources, including legislation, professional codes of conduct. So, uh, for example, um, uh, a number of uh, professions do have professional codes of conduct, like the legal profession, for example, technical specifications and contractual terms and conditions. The standards determine the responsibilities and the duties of the auditor. And in some disciplines there are auditing standards which outline the basic principles of audit methods and performance. And that accounting standard, uh, standards uh, document on the right uh, is uh, an example of that. They're usually conducted, uh, audits, auditors don't have time nor organisations resources to allow full audits to be conducted of every little aspect of an organisation. So audits uh, uh, normally use sampling techniques. Uh, so it's a, having a slice uh, and uh, the uh, auditor or the standard will decide uh, how big that slice will be, whether it will be up and down the organisation or across the organisation. So sampling techniques. The audit function can be internal, where it's, uh, the requirement is internally generated and carried out by employees or contractors or external, where the requirement is internally or externally generated but is carried out by an independent agency or body to check on a specific area of activity. So let's have a look at the audit function. We have the auditor. The auditor accumulates and evaluates evidence. They need to ascertain the correlation between the information and the established criteria. So it's a comparison of what they can, what, what evidence, so it's based on the evidence and the established criteria. And communicates the results to the interested users. The three categories of audit are financial audits, and the examples are financial uh, records or tax liability type audits or financial audits, compliance audits, uh, and some examples of these are aviation safety regulatory oversight, occupational health and safety audits, and fire safety preparedness audits. They're considered to be compliance audits. And there's operational audits, and that involves uh, the evaluation of any part of the organisation's operational activities to ensure that staff are abiding by the set policies, procedures and practices. And some of the examples of flight deck and cabin safety checks emergency eva evacuation, refuelling activities and so on and so forth. You know, the hangar, what are the people doing in the hangar and checking on that would be an operational audit. Uh, let's first uh, look at financial audits. Financial audit is determining whether recorded information and or observed activities properly reflects the financial events and or meets the laid down procedures during the period under review. The objective is to enable an auditor to express an opinion on an entity's financial records in order to add credibility to the financial representations of management. So I'll say that again, the objective of a financial audit is to enable an auditor to express an opinion on an entity's financial records in order to add credibility. So not to say it's perfect, not to say that the financial records are perfect, but to add credibility to the financial representations of management. The audit should cover all aspects of the entity necessary to form an opinion uh, with regards to the financial information uh, complying with the relevant regulations and statutory requirements. The views presented by the financial information as a whole is consistent with the auditor's knowledge of the business entity. The financial information has been prepared in accordance with applicable accounting standards and there is an adequate disclosure of all material matters necessary to give a true and fair view. An audit performed in accordance with audit standards should provide reasonable assurance. It, there's no guarantees here and as to whether the financial report is free from material misstatement. 
So an audit performed in accordance with audit standards should provide reasonable assurance as to whether the financial report is free from material misstatement. And reasonable assurance relates to the whole audit process. So the accumulation of audit evidence and the drawing of conclusions based on that evidence. Uh, look, there was some difficulty with this pr approach uh, a few years ago where large companies were using some of the accounting firms to not only audit them, but also to provide business advice to them. So there was a conflict of interest and uh, uh, la a large number of the uh, large accounting firms, in fact, uh, had major issues from that period of time. You need to ensure uh, in an organisation that your business planning processes and who may be influencing those are very different to those who are auditing the organisation. Let's now move over to compliance audits, and I put a policeman here. Some people think of it as like police audits. And the objective for compliance audits are for regulatory authorities, or for the regulatory authority or other interested party, to assure itself that the organisation being audited is compliant with the provisions of the applicable legislation or prescribed standard. So can't, uh, it can not only be, say, the aviation safety regulator is coming to audit you, but it might be another airline that you want to enter some form of business relationship with. Uh, it's not uncommon for airlines to audit each other, and we'll talk about this in the case study in the full lecture. Compliance audits, uh, they can be either product or systems based, and what do we mean by that? Uh, product is going and looking at a number of different uh, audits, so looking at someone uh, working uh, on the hangar floor, for example, uh, uh, servicing an engine, uh, you might look at that, you might look at various different aspects of, uh, of the maintenance activities not necessarily related to each other. So again, you're sampling by doing those product audits. But the other way of auditing in these days is uh, the control system. So uh, looking at the systems that control the organisation. And so we're looking at how the auditee manages its responsibilities and they're called systems audits. So. As I say here, product audits, uh, the, the check of individual activities, processes, components, and products. So the work of a technician uh, being checked by an auditor is a product audit. And a systems audit, an example of that is an inspector checking the implementation and acceptance of the safety management system or the airport emergency plan. And so they fall into that category. Let's have a look at operational audits. The objective is to enable the checking authority to satisfy themselves that all operational audits are being conducted or being carried out in accordance with the approved policies, procedures and practices. And they can be conducted by internal or external auditors. Examples of uh, operational auditing in aviation industry are things like pilot checking and training, cabin staff in-flight checks, ground handling reviews, occupational health and safety and things of that nature. So that completed the three different types of audits from financial compliance to operational audits. Uh, again, most important aspect of our industry. The point I'd like to make about resources is that audits consume considerable internal staff time, whether they're internal or external audits. However, any efficient and effective organizations, organization accepts this as a part of doing business in a contemporary world. So audits are to be encouraged, auditors are to be, uh, are to be complimented on what they're doing, and the last thing you should think of as auditors are the demons that uh, are chasing you. Unless you've done something wrong, of course. In the full lecture, I then present a case study. Uh, my current case study is the IATA Operational Safety Audit Program, or IOSA. The learning points from this lecture, as usual, are shown uh, on the slides. And auditing everything we do, next week uh, we start looking at marking and the consumer. So auditing everything we do, the synopsis lecture 11 is now complete. Thank you for your attention.